World War II was fought from 1939 to 1945, and it involved the majority of the world's nations, including all of the countries considered the great powers of the time. More than 100 million people served in military during World War II from over 30 different countries. By the end of the war, there were two opposing military alliances, the Allies and the Axis. Europe In September 1939, Germany invaded Poland and France and Britain declared war on Germany. From late 1939 to early 1941, in a series of campaigns and treaties, Germany formed the Axis alliance with Italy, conquering or subduing much of continental Europe. My grandfather, Constantine Haveris, joined the Greek army in 1940 to fight the invasion of the Axis into Greece. He kept a daily diary from the day he left Athens for Albania in October 1940 until his return in May 1941. Ojide. Italian dictator Benito Mussolini wanted to prove to Hitler that he could lead Italy to military success similar to what Germany had in Europe. On October 28, 1940, Italy demanded that Greece allow free passage for Axis troops to occupy strategic points in Greece. Greek Prime Minister Metaxas' response was simple yet firm. Ohi. No. Greece entered World War II on October 28, 1940, when the Italian army invaded from Albania beginning the Greco-Italian War. Metaxas addressed the Greeks with these words. The time has come for Greece to fight for her independence. Greeks, now we must prove ourselves worthy of our forefathers and the freedom they bestow upon us. Greeks, now fight for your fatherland, for your wives, for your children, and the sacred traditions. The struggle now is for everything. Δευτέρα, 28 Οκτωβρίου 1940. Εξαφνά ακούω τις καμπάνες και τις σιρήνες να χτυπούν αδιάκοπα. October 28, 1940. Day of declaration of war with Italy. I'm still in bed thinking of the day's activities as I hear the sound of sirens and the church bells going off. War has been declared. I get dressed quickly, go to my office, say goodbye to my colleagues, and then run back home. I give my wishes to my beloved mother, kiss my sisters, and quickly run to the call of duty for my country. Unfortunately, there are a lot of people waiting, and my drafting gets postponed for the next day. The next morning, I get drafted in the Greek army. Here I am, one more time in my life, a soldier, ready to listen to the voice of duty for my beloved country. My hatred for Italy is strong. We must win at all costs. We must prove to the world that Greece is the free nation and will live free forever. March 31, 1941. A day of battle. At about 3 a.m. we woke up, and by 4 a.m. we were in position. The first company will start the fight, and it will be backed up by two squads. One of them is us. At about 10 a.m. the fight ends with a lot of casualties. We capture about 300 Italian soldiers. The field is a horrible sight. Dead bodies scattered around the snow-covered fields. I lost two good friends. They lay dead with the guns in their hands. These are my heroes. The next day poses to be a very lucky day for me. An Italian air raid kills a few of us. A bomb falls in front of me but does not explode. God is on my side. This is a miracle. I will remember for the rest of my life. May 5th, 1941. Day of my return to Athens. At about 7 p.m. we arrive in the rail station. A lot of people are waiting for their loved ones. I try to see if any of my family is waiting for me. I start walking towards my home, approaching my neighborhood. I see familiar faces. I greet them, but they don't seem to recognize me. As I come to the bridge, I face my home, and my heart is pounding from happiness. I see my young sister sweeping the sidewalk. She throws the broom and runs inside the house. I cannot talk at all. My mother and two sisters run toward me. We hug each other with tears in our eyes. The neighbors are all out in their windows welcoming me. My young brother, who has just returned from fighting the German Axis in Egypt, comes in a few minutes later. We promise each other to keep fighting with all we have for the freedom of our beloved country. As I write the last notes for this diary, I have to say that during these past six months of this expedition, I did nothing else but obey to the call of duty. Regretfully, all efforts did not bring the desired outcome, but this is only temporary. I am ready to keep fighting with all my heart for the liberation of my country. This is the desire of all Greece, and we will succeed very soon. 
May 1941, Soldier Konstantinos Haberis, Regiment 1, Battalion 2, Division 16. Greece in World War II. The Greek army was able to stop the invasion and was even able to push the Italians back into Albania, thereby winning one of the first victories for the Allies. The Greek successes and inability of the Italians to reverse the situation forced Nazi Germany to assist Mussolini. The Germans invaded Greece and Yugoslavia on April 6, 1941, and both countries within a month, despite British aid to Greece in the form of an expeditionary corps. German paratroopers suffered from extensive casualties in the battles with Greece that they abandoned large-scale airborne operations for the remainder of the war, and the German diversions of resources in the Balkans is also considered by some historians to have delayed the launch of the invasion of the Soviet Union by a critical month, which proved disastrous when the German army failed to take Moscow. October 28, 1940, Greek Premier Yanis Metaxas rejects an Italian ultimatum demanding the occupation of Greek territory. April 6, 1941, the German army invades Greece. April 27, 1941, the German army enters Athens. The Nazi flag is raised on Acropolis. A soldier on guard duty jumps off the Acropolis wrapped in the Greek flag. May 1941. The Allied forces impose a naval blockade of Greece, ending off all imports, including foods. Summer 1942 The great suffering and pressure of the exiled Greek government eventually forces the British partially to lift the blockade. The International Red Cross is able to distribute food supplies in sufficient quantities. October 14, 1944 Athens is liberated and the Greek government in exile returns, with George Papandreou as premier.